traveling as fast as an airplane, but without leaving the ground. That's possible with this vehicle. Would you hop on? This is the Hyperloop. Here in the Spanish city of Valencia, a company is working on the new technology that will change the way we get from point A to point B and make it more eco-friendly. Global warming is man-made. 15% of all greenhouse gas emissions come from transport. So what does the future of cars, planes, and trains look like? This guy is Juan Bithen, founder of Thedaros, the company behind this Hyperloop. He's convinced that soon we'll all be traveling through futuristic-looking tubes. For example, a train ride from Barcelona to Paris at the moment takes about nine hours. In a Hyperloop, we could cover the same distance in one and a half hours. Here's how it works. So-called pods accelerate gradually by electric propulsion through a low-pressure tube. Maintaining low pressure is crucial for the Hyperloop in order to have as little air resistance as possible. The pod floats along the track using magnetic levitation and glides. It can reach velocities comparable to planes due to ultra-low aerodynamic drag. There are different kinds of pods that can fit between 50 and 200 people. Magnets are attached to the outside of the pods in order to let them float in the tube. Most companies put the magnets in the tube. That means that you have to install magnets and electrification systems over the course of the entire track. What we're doing is we're installing all these parts in the vehicle. And by that, we're reducing the cost per kilometer. Con nuestro sistema lo que estamos haciendo es poner esos sistemas en el vehículo y de esta forma el coste por kilómetro se reduce. An analysis by the Federal Department of Energy in the United States found that transporting passengers via Hyperloop could result in 20% energy savings compared to other modes, such as air or personal vehicles. Some experts claim Hyperloops would save even more. Many companies around the world are working on their own models. Initially, the Hyperloop technology was developed by SpaceX and Elon Musk. In 2015, Musk decided to open source all the research that had been done at SpaceX and let student groups around the world compete in developing the concept even further. Juan Bithen and his then classmates participated in the contest and won best design with their vehicle that is now being built at the Theodoros facilities. This here is a tube of 12 meters in which we can try out different Hyperloop models at low pressure. We can obtain different pressure levels through an electric pump. And then we have also solar panels on top. With these panels, we generate energy that's being used to keep the pressure low within the tube. With Hyperloop, Thaleros and other companies try to create a method of transportation for distances between 400 and 1500 kilometers. Juan Bithen and his team are developing the model in Spain, but it's other countries that could profit much more from it. You see Europe with a pretty advanced uh, infrastructure. The thing is that you need to homologate the technical specifications, but I strongly believe that Europe is a good market. Now, you see others where the infrastructure is not in place yet, and you see Dubai, you see India, where the infrastructure could be good, but is antiquate. I believe the regions and geographies where this is going to take place, it's countries like China, India, probably Brazil that are more open to these type of ideas. Just like traditional airports today, Juan Bithen envisions Hyperloop stations outside of metropolitan regions across Europe. Other companies have already conducted successful passenger tests. For Theleros, Bithen expects the first tests with passengers to be ready by 2030.